Now, this evening, we're in the beautiful premises, actually, of Limerick International Radio, which is situated in the vicinity and the domain of Pike Rovers, one of the great uh, athletic clubs, actually football clubs, known in Limerick City and County. I'm now joined by Mary Honan, who recently was conferred with her PhD. As I say, it's just great to have the brains. Mary, great talking to you this evening. I don't know about brains, John. I think it's um, 90% uh, hard work, 10%, <laughs> suppose, some bit of in- intelligence, maybe. I don't oh, know. Oh, yeah, or oh, pl- plenty of intelligence, Mary. You needn't worry about but that. It's, it's mostly hard work. Now, it's, it, the, the thesis uh, yes. in which uh, you had to do is called The Literary Representation of World War II Childhood, Interrogating the Concept of Hospitality. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, it's, I looked really at 22 primary texts from 1939 to present day, and I looked at um, uh, multiple genres uh, from uh, diaries, letters, graphic novels, time travel novels, uh, fairy tales, um, uh, Hitler youth novels, mm-hmm. and all reinterpreted to um, represent uh, childhood during the Holocaust. Some of them were... Um, like the boy in the striped pyjamas, didn't really reference the Holocaust. If you were an adult, you knew that there was uh, an intention to reference the Holocaust in some way. But if you were a child, it could have been about anything, which is uh, the way I looked at the... I deconstructed all of the primary texts uh, through uh, Jacques Derrida's uh, uh, deconstruction and um, his views on hospitality. And Jacques Derrida was a theorist, a French Albanian Jewish theorist, who um, believed that there was no such thing as the perfect af- act of hospitality or the perfect gift. That once you give a gift, you give a debt, mm. because whether the person receiving the gift um, accepts it, rejects it, or acknowledges it or reciprocates it, they're immediately in debt. The person who's always the Mm. beneficiary of a gift is the person who gives. In relation to people accessing this book, um, Mm. can they do so? Well, I've been, I've actually been very fortunate, John. I've been approached um, prior to my PhD by, well, I had been um, approached a while back by Yad Vashem, which is the largest Holocaust memorial in Jerusalem. Yes. Um, they wanted a copy of it for their library and um, and also a copy of my master's, which was on the same subject. Yes. I have two masters and one taught and one research on the same subject, and then I went into the PhD. But it's um, I got a, a publisher just before... Um, just before I graduated last week or two weeks ago now, um, which is great. I'm in the process now of signing the contract. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, so... We wish you the very, yeah. very best of luck, Mary. The name Actually, will probably change because the name is way too long for well, a book. I tell you, it's, it's <laughs> my attention. It's, it's something that really I do want to, to actually read myself. Mm-hmm. But we'll be more having more in-depth uh, discussion with you mm-hmm. on that because... Also here tonight, uh, we're looking at the wonderful premises and the great setup of Limerick International Radio. And we do have to thank not only you, Mary, but the main spearheading man, the brainchild of Pat Barry. Pat, I know, I know. I well, I think I think it's. Oh well, I I think so. I think the man was played with calls and played with everything, but you put he you you put your heart and soul into this, and now you are reaping the rewards. Well, John, the, the, this, it's been in gestation for a long time, so to speak, the project that that is. And uh, we had uh, spoken on and off over the past 10 to 12 months about doing something. We didn't know exactly what we do, but we all wanted to do something to do with radio and broadcasting because we're all interested and we're all nerds, like, just like yourself. So we said, look, let's explore possibilities. Let's ex- explore ideas. Let's look around for a premises. We thought to be easy. Mm. But it certainly was not, and uh, that's not uh, saying anything about myself, but the amount of uh, empty premises is astonishing, number one. That's the first thing to say. The prices are astonishing as well, but uh, the rates are criminal. 
the mm. rates are criminal in my mind. But that's only my opinion. And so mm. therefore, we said, really, if we want to do this in any scale, maybe the funding model we were thinking of will not be uh, capable of doing something like this. But we still persevered with ideas. We were still meeting in small groups around town and probably met us a few times and phoning and meeting. And we had different meetings with different groups of people with a, a well-known group. We won't mention their names because we hadn't permission to mention their names, no. but they were very interested and they probably might be a partner with us regarding getting um, space on platform, on, on a terrestrial platform and on uh, what we call the sky platform as yes, well I and see. so therefore there, there are those possibilities oh, but anyway to get back yes. to ourselves so then i said to mary one night look maybe we should look at community buildings mm-hmm. and she said just offhand i wonder should i approach bike rovers because they might have space you know i said anywhere would have space that might be suitable so here we are anyway and mary herself and her own family her late mum and dad right. were heavily involved and founding members of the of the of the lifelong members and so therefore here we are and we're just in the process of uh, putting it together as you can see this will this is the the reception area yeah and, and, lovely and, comfortable and uh, yeah. we're th- there'll be two studios obviously one uh, one dedicated to programming to mm-hmm. mainly music programming and small chat shows yes. and the other one will be dedicated to our youtube channel yes yes i see well can i just say on that point john <clears throat> that i am just tremendously privileged i have to say that pike rovers have given us this because I don't know about John Pat because he doesn't have the same, I suppose, emotional attachment to Pike no, Rovers. Yeah, well, My dad was one that. of the. Uh, he he <coughs> helped. He was labouring on the, on the building of the original clubhouse that uh, where we we are now. This is of course, and we were one of the only clubs to get. We were one of the first clubs to get an all weather pitch. And um, we had some great club uh, club people all up through the years. We've had some dreadful tragedies, but out of the tragedies we've had, we have um, come together as a club even stronger. If that was possible, because it was my mother's first cousin who founded was one of the founding members of the club and his father was life president and as yes. well as pres- life president of the NACA. So. It's a very small community, and everybody's everyone was very yes. close in the community. Yes. And walking in today, in here, to this beautiful, beautiful um, reception area, um, I felt like I was home. So Limerick International Radio really, at the moment, we're uh, our website is about to be launched next weekend. Also, uh, we're uh, we're getting all the publicity <laughs> organised for ourselves, and our uh, broadband and uh, telephone lines will be in in the next three or four days. So after that the time frame, we had hoped we still there might be possibility we could do some test programs before Christmas, which is very tight at this stage. But nevertheless, we'll have a big uh, opening anyway in January. There's no doubt about that. Fantastic. You know, we, we'll launch. Uh, we're so excited about yeah, it, really. So well, exciting. the only thing that uh, just remains for me to say is congratulations to you, Pat. Congratulations to you, Mary, because you've opened the door for many would-be broadcasters yeah. or old fogies like myself who have been termed. Uh, grumpy and grouchy every day but it's great to know that you're with people that are going to speak their mind that's refreshing and that's why people need to listen to Limerick International Radio that it is so important to us that everybody promotes themselves and that we there's no and and each other but that there's no when you when a person is promoting themselves it it, everybody benefits from 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 that don't okay. you agree uh, absolutely yeah, absolutely yeah Great. well thank you so much indeed and uh, i understand that pat has uh, left a, a cream bun out there for me indeed. so i'll now and partake we've had, uh, brian hinchy in with his homemade brown bread he very good i'm bread. taking that home with me <laughs> thank you so much pat thank, thank you, you mary thank you so Thanks much and we'll be talking us. again god bless you all bye bye